four-wheel drive lifestyle is all about enjoying the bush, heading out into the bush, taking the family into the bush, quality family time, and loving Australia by being part of it, by feeling it, by exploring it, by having adventures in it. And I used to get asked all the time, what do I really need to do that, Ruthie? And people would have a list of things they thought they needed and, you know, it can be a wish list as long as both my arms and a couple of legs. But at the end of the day, there is such a thing as a sensibly equipped family truck. You might not find it actually in my shed, you might do pretty soon, but that's something else, okay? Um, one of the best explanations I've ever seen for why we do it, what we've got, what I've done to my truck, was this old custom clip from the four wheel drive action days. A guy called Jason and his 09 Navara, 2009 Navara. So in those days, the truck was almost new. Doesn't matter, you can get something very similar these days. Some people would say more electrics are not quite as good, but you know, still a good vehicle. And then you can start adding things to it, just the way Jason did, to make it more competent, to make it a true common sense bush tourer. The thing that's kind of got everything it needs without too much of anything. Now, over the years, you know, products have got better and brand names have changed and the whole scenario of where you go and what you get and everything else, it's all changed so rapidly it's not funny. But the basic common sense behind setting up a vehicle, what you need and why you need it, is rarely explained as well as Jason did right here in this clip. So look, if you're in that position where you're thinking about what do I really need? You know, what do I need to comfortably take the wife and kids or for the wife to take the husband and kids, however it works in your family, out into the bush, up the beach, show them some of Australia and bring them home again after we've all had a really comfortable good day with a bit of adventure in it too. And I know my family was brought up on that and they still love it. So what do you really need? Listen, watch this clip. Watch what Jason put on his Navara. Don't worry about the fact that it's a Nissan. <laughs> That's just me having a go. There's a lot of very classy Navaras out there. But have a listen to what Jason's got to say about things like rim choice, tyre choice, what sort of protective gear he's using, you know, side protection, bash plates, just things like that and why do you fit them? And at somewhere, somewhere down this whole line, you're going to see that this is common sense, all right? You don't need it all. You can go bush next weekend in the Volkswagen and just pull up at the gate and walk in. Or you can go that little bit further or that little bit further again. A standard four wheel drive will get you a long way. A handful of products will make it a lot more comfortable. And once you start getting into this end of it, where you want to go pretty much anywhere and be competent and get in and get out, well, then you've got something like Jason's rig. This is really cool because even though you probably know it, you might need to think about it again, especially if like me, you're seriously considering another vehicle. Good on you guys. Hi, my name's Jason, and this is my Nissan Navara. Up the front here, we've got the steel bull bar for added protection, a nine and a half thousand pound winch, uh, the light force spotlights to give us a bit of extra vision at night time, and underneath we've got a uh, three mil sump, sump guard. Down the side here, we've got 16 by 8 uh, King Steel wheels. Uh, we chose them so that they uh, fit the 26575 tyre better. The wheel, we got a 20mm offset further out so that it came to the edge of the guard. Uh, we've got a set of homemade custom rock sliders. We looked at a few magazines and picked a design that we thought would fit the car better and tried to make them. Underneath, we've got a uh, two-inch suspension lift. Gives a little bit more, more clearance for the tyres and underneath the off-road.
Just after purchasing the vehicle, we got the uh, genuine snorkel fitted to give us a bit of cool air, uh, dust free to feed the engine, and also help us when we do the water crossings to stop us sucking in any water. On the rear here, we've got a, uh, a bar, which has incorporated the tow bar, and the bar that goes down the side to give it a bit of protection onto the rear panel, and the two recovery points into the rear. Inside we've got our 60 litre fridge on a fridge slide. Uh, at the top there we've got a uh, custom made shelf and then underneath a drawer which holds our first aid kit, our tyre repair kit and some recovery bits and pieces as well. Up the top here we've got an awning that we use at the beach or out bush for a bit of shelter, get out of the sun and behind that we've got a steel roof rack which we use for carrying extra camping gear if we don't take our camper trailer or we'll use it for collecting firewood when we're actually out camping. Underneath the bonnet we have two cranking batteries, we've got the air compressor that runs the rear locker, uh, also used for blowing up the tyres and we've got a rapid chip. Inside here we've kept it relatively simple and uh, basic. We've got the UHF radio for communications, the turbo timer to allow it to cool down and the switches for the compressor and the rear air locker. I think one of the best trips we've had would be just recently we spent uh, six days down at Shane's Beach, uh, south of WA. There's some good four-wheel drive tracks in amongst the national parks. Get up the beach, good exploring out through Bremer Bay and some good fishing as well. Thanks for checking out my truck. <laughs>